joining us, everyone. I'm so proud to be here with the rest of my team from Live It at the World Sustainability Conference here in India. We've, come, we've flown all the way from Australia to be here with you today. I know it's been a long day for you all. You've heard a lot of good speakers today, but I can tell you now you've heard from the rest and now you can hear from the best. <laughs> I'm Caitlin, Director of Live It. 20 years ago, I was working in HR and renovating houses, and now I'm passionate about spreading the Live It philosophy to the rest of the world. Hi everyone, I'm Adam, Director of Live It. Back in 2017, I was working in the civil engineering sector and building my family home. These days, I'm smart, I'm um, passionate about self-sufficient energy and water and sustainable housing. Hi everyone, I'm Aaron. Throwing back 2017, I was working in heavy industry construction and project management. Now I'm passionate about sustainable and efficient housing. Hi everyone, I'm Tristan, director at Live It. Uh, remember the back of the start of our journey, 20, roughly, roughly 20 years ago, I was starting a small family, um, working in the rail industry as a project engineer, and we had an idea. I just knew it would work. Fast forward 20 years and look at it, look at where we've come. Now I'm passionate about spreading our idea to the wider community across the globe. Hi, I'm Marty, background in cattle production and heavy industry. Um, I've been working with the Liver team since 2017, and I'm passionate about giving people more money and more time to do the things they love. Thanks, team. So, why are we the keynote speakers at this conference here today? We are here to share the Libet story. But to do that, we have to transport you back in time and space. Think back 20 years, back in 2017, across the other side of the world in regional Australia. 2017 was a different place. In the Hunter region, we were only just starting to implement smart city capabilities. Our airport was, it was only a domestic terminal. We couldn't have flown here today from, from Newcastle. We thought of exports in the very narrow sense of selling goods and services overseas. We thought about exports from the Hunter region as the coal ships coming in and out of the harbour. And we also thought about exports as our manufactured products. Um, um, that we had manufacturers in the Hunter region that were at the forefront of innovation, um, using advanced manufacturing to service the rest of the world. And we were wasting so much. We were wasting food, we were wasting energy, we were wasting water, we were wasting time. We were wasting waste. But now, fast forward 20 years, we are here in 2037 on the world stage and we are here to tell the Livet story. Adam's going to tell you about our motivation and how this all started. Aaron's going to tell you about um, a key partnership that we formed uh, to enable our, our um, idea. Tristan's going to tell you about what we actually do and what we can offer. And Marty's going to take us on the 20 year journey from how we got from 2017 to 2037. So sit back, enjoy your smart bags and come along for the Live It journey. Thank you, Caitlin. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's start back at the beginning, where our story started back home in Newcastle in the Hunter region of Australia. Newcastle, previously known as the Steel City, had its, was a, was a harbourside city that had its roots in the coal and steel industries. It's the second largest city in New South Wales, sixth largest city in Australia. So back in 2017, the five of us here um, were aspiring leaders who had met at the Hunter Net Future Leaders program back in the time. We had many things in common. We were settling down. We were building houses. We were buying houses and renovating. We were all looking for that place to set up to call home with our families. We had similar frustrations, all experiencing the same inefficiencies. We could buy a solar panel. We could buy a water tank. But there was no personal benefit or very little gain from um, installing those. We were frustrated with wasting time working working just to pay our excessive living expenses. I remember this one time. I'd just finished building my own home. A standalone solar panel was not very cost effective, obviously useless at night, and battery storage was just inefficient at the time. 
There was no requirement or incentive for me to go down that path. Then bam! <laughs> Six months down the truck after finishing my home, my pregnant wife got accustomed to ducted air conditioning and I got a $1,200 electricity bill. <laughs> I thought there just has to be a cheaper way to do this. Similarly, we all didn't have the time to achieve what we wanted to due to working just to cover those excessive living costs. So together, we had a dream. We had visions of a future where not only everything in our home was connected and automated, but a future where everything was pieced together, where we could benefit from it as a collective. On top of this, we were faced with the closure of one of our region's most significant coal-fired power stations in Liddell in the Hunter Valley in 2022. This set a stepping stone for the need to implement a smarter way for us to generate energy supply. But why did it have to be commercially generated? We had existing technology that would allow individual residential properties to provide their own renewable energy along with water harvesting, but there was no mechanism or encouragement to fully implement this. So from that point, Livet began to evolve. Livet exists to implement sustainable smart home integrated communities through government policy and incentives. We value processes that are good for the earth, good for each other, and good for creating freedom for better quality of life. We here at Livet have a simple mission to export our philosophy for the benefit of the global community for future generations. We do not want to keep this a secret and we strongly believe that other cities around the globe such as you guys here in New Delhi, India, can achieve what we have achieved back home in Newcastle, Australia. So, what do Livet do, you are all asking yourselves. We are not a tech company and we are not trying to be either. Through consultation, planning and great motivation, we have implemented standards for new homes and retrofitting of existing homes. We make homes energy efficient, water efficient, and sustainable long term. Livet are simply a consultancy that collaborate with government sectors such as local councils and development corporations to design and implement sustainable smart home strategies. Our aim is to create sustainable cities everywhere that are capable of capturing their own energy and water. Livet strive to revive, reuse, recycle and reduce the way we use our key resources. Livet are all about setting up a standard for regions to create a community of sustainable and self-sufficient homes that are capable of operating off the grid without relying on public infrastructure. Thank you. All right, so when the five of us first got together, we had this green vision. We knew it would make a huge, huge positive impact on the economy, the environment and the everyday household. But we had a problem. Smart home technology was expensive to purchase and to install, and the everyday household just could not afford this. But thinking back 20 years ago, the average household was raising a family. They were paying a mortgage, they were paying bills, power, gas, water. How could they afford to purchase and install this technology? So, also, as Adam mentioned, there was increased pressure with the closure of the power stations, which is going to drive demand of power and increase bills. So, sorry. Yeah, so we identified we need a key partnership with the public sector to help drive and influence the public to get on board with our vision. We identified the Hunter Development Corporation. They, the HDC had similar goals to live it. The HDC outlined a 20 year blueprint for the benefit of the Hunter to improve planning. For the first time, the Hunter was going to be planned for as a whole. Land use for both rural and resource areas and environment to protect the diversity of Australia. So, the HDC brought together the region's leading councils, 10% of the state's population, and their drive was to create a leading regional economy, a rich, biodiverse natural environment, thriving communities, and greater housing choices and jobs. So the HDC also had the backing of the state government. And they had the influence to lead and lead the public to the Livet vision. 
Remember, back in 2017, this was a really hard idea to get across to the public. Asking the public to increase their rates, yearly rates, was just going to be a hard point to convince. We needed help. So the scene was set. We went to the HDC with our model and we started a campaign. The H HDC got on board. And the rest is history and the results are fact. So here we are, 20 years on, in India. We're here to export our model to influence and drive government policy and incentive. So get on board with us. We'll drive your government, we'll improve your environment quality of life whilst protecting and growing your back pocket. Government policy incentive is key. Thanks very much, Aaron. All right, well, by now you're probably wondering, what do we actually do? Well, I might start by answering that question and saying, what didn't we do? Adam touched on the fact we're not a tech company, we don't pretend to be. On top of that, we don't design, manufacture or install the products themselves. So, what do you do, you ask? Well, what we do is we implement change based on thought leadership. We've created a central hub, a place that can be used as a framework to achieve a sustainable region as a whole. Through what? Okay, well, this might not knock you off your chair and knock your socks off, but we used existing technology to allow everyday individuals to access solar, battery storage, and water, and water storage in their homes. <coughs> Sounds pretty simple, right? Essentially it is. Take solar for instance. We all take power for granted. We need it every day. We need it reliably. Back in 2017, Australia was having issues with reliable power. As Adam mentioned, we had power plants closing down. We needed a solution. Solar's great. It's free. It's renewable. And it's green. There's just one little hiccup. The sun doesn't shine at night, does it? So, to overcome that, back in 2017, this new technology came about. Battery storage. Pretty much the fourth industrial revolution in technology. This brought about strong competition among among industries and companies vying for that all important electric car that we see driving around today. So we tapped into this to provide the power when people needed it most. Cook their meals at night time and in the mornings have their shower when they wake up. Water storage tanks, our third item. Back in Australia, we're the biggest water consumers per capita on earth. Which is pretty ironic really considering we're basically one big desert with a few palm trees around the edges where people live. We literally poured our water down the drain back then. Now, we capture it and reuse it in our toilets, dishwashers, washing machines, even drinking water. And then, we capture it again and use it on our gardens. The cost. We recognised up front this is not a one size fits all approach. It's very hard to get someone in a two bedroom home to pay for what someone's using in a four bedroom. So we created a simple framework to allow for this, as you can see. Now the benefits, they're pretty simple too. They're pretty self-explanatory. Solar and battery reduce power costs by two thirds for average Australian. <coughs> Recycled water and rain tanks cut the average household water consumption by up to 30%. Okay, great. I could have come up with that, you say? But the magic happens when we brought it to a whole region and a whole community, because then everyone's working together and the benefits come about tenfold. We also reduce the strain on our electricity infrastructure. We reduce the strain on our dams and water sources, all important. Our stormwater infrastructure didn't need to be upgraded as our population grew. Our sewer maintenance was reduced drastically, all important. Our runoff into the ocean for the environment, the greenies, well, we cut that by two thirds, didn't we? Greenhouse gases, they were reduced as well. So in closing, an added bonus to our scheme over the last 20 years is that Hunter residents back in Australia have had the greenest gardens in the state. We've also had the best public infrastructure, parks, playgrounds and sporting fields. So if you think this is something that would interest you across the globe, we're keen to get together and have a chat and see if we can make it happen. Well, uh, thanks Tristan. Hi, I'm Marty and I'm going to step you through directly the last 20 years in sort of a five year time frame. So we had the wonderful idea, everyone has a smart home, off the grid, all the rest of it. But how do you actually implement it and make it happen on such a large scale? 
So, I'll set the scene 2017 as the guys have already expanded on. There was a significant incoming power crisis. Liberal was blaming Labor, the public was blaming privatisation. Everyone, it was all over the media. It was all over the print media, the TV, and that thing, what was it? Facebook. <laughs> so, we have to combine that with the Newcastle Smart City strategy and we had a path forward. We had a clear path forward of where we wanted to go. My personal story, I bought a house with my fiance in 2017, built in 1901 on Cameron Hill in Hamilton. It was old, inefficient, we went down the path of solar and batteries and instantly saw the benefits. So, the idea is, you put a levy, so we needed to make it so it was only hunter wide, so we implemented a levy on yearly rates. That levy built a pool of money, which created funds for a subsidy, and then over the 15 years from 2022 to 2037, the subsidy would be handed out uh, based on priority of the system you're going to implement um, to increase, or I suppose accelerate rapidly, smart home take-up implementation. So, subsidy, the idea was we got a nice round figure, 300 bucks a dwelling, and by 2037, 70% implementation. That's the nuts and bolts of it. Now, I'll step you through how that, how that went through over the 15 years. So the first five years, we developed our partnership with the Hunter Development Corporation, and we got the levy introduced. By 2021, we collected our first batch of funds, about $90 million, that's $300 a household. In 2022, we started handing out subsidies. Subsidies were handed out based on uh, priority, based on the size of the scheme you implement, benefits to the community, etc. We had significant public, we had significant public resistance. If you know the Cotter model for change, we had an overarching sense of urgency. However, with the power shortage, so we acti activated public policy, and we had a new, unique chance to develop society in a proper, prosperous Hunter region. So, by 2021, when the subsidy kicked in, blood was on the walls. It was all over the place. We were the biggest enemies in the Hunter Valley. Uh, prices were through the roof, were dealt shut down. There were blackouts constantly through the warmer summer months and the colder winter months. But we bonded together with heavy industry to shut down heavy industry this time to keep the power on for households. We stuck to our partnerships and stuck together. There was significant public pressure, however, and the media was making us out to be the enemies. But we were committed. By 2027, through the first five years of the scheme, nearly one quarter, 24% of all households in the Hunter had implemented smart home technology. So they'd received the subsidy, which covers about 30% of your costs, and put on solar, batteries, water storage. You get the idea. Also by that time, about $600 million in subsidy were given out, and we estimated the industry was worth about $2 billion over that time. So the flow on effects were starting to take hold. New Delhi could be no different. India could implement this. Just ask yourself, can this be done? By 2027, you can see it here. Through the next five year block, 2027 to 2032, the population of the Hunter had grown to over 800,000 people. There are over 340,000 dwellings, and by the end of that period, 45% 45, 45 of all homes were smart home technology. Power prices were starting to come down, demand on the grid was starting to lessen, and people could, the momentum was growing, it was snowballing. We were over the hump, if you, if you think about the work, we were over the hump, and it was smooth sailing from here. The live it motto, home is where the smart is, was starting to become the beat of the hunter drum. Nearly half of all residents had travelled down this journey. I remember voting at a local election at the time and thinking back 10 years about how we were the, the enemies and the worst people in the room, and now we were the heroes. We'd started the journey. Competition for the subsidy was now heating up. People were seeing their neighbours not paying for power bills, using their own water, living better, and people were starting to put in bigger systems and bidding for higher, bidding to get that subsidy. Residents of the Hana were doing anything to embrace a sustainable lifestyle. Small business was booming. The subsidy kicked off at about $100 million a year, which is 30%, so you're talking about a $300 million a year industry. And this was paying back over and over again. Startup industries were booming off this success. Innovation, not just in power use, storage, but also how can we generate more. Apprenticeships and tertiary education institutions were jumping on board and starting to train the people of the Hunter in how to be better in this industry. The last five years have been good. We estimate today about that the industry has been worth $6 billion to the Hunter community. Smart city blueprints from Newcastle City Council have now spread out to the other major city councils of the Hunter, Maitland and Lake Macquarie, Port Stephens. We are now looking to the future. We're at 70%, how do we get to 100%? We're challenging ourselves. And what does this mean for societies going forward? 70% of our driverless cars now are all powered by household power generation. 70% of our houses are off the grid. We're richer, 
happier and better off as a region. The Hunter has experienced unparalleled population and job growth. Can you believe it? Our population is nearly 900,000 here today. Who would have thought that? Can this be done here in India in a third world context? Communities from around the world are trying to emulate our success. Livet can help you do that. Please get us on board. We can help you take our idea to thrive and grow. I want New Delhi to become marinated in the Livet Home Smart Home Vision. Give your people more time and more money to do the things they love. Thanks team. So now you've heard the Livet story. You've heard about our motivation, about our key partnership, about what we actually do and how we made it happen. Livet disrupted the way that we think about exports. So we used to think about goods and services selling overseas. We think about Hunter Valley wines reaching the rest of the world. But now we think about activating government policy. We think about exports as spreading ideas to the rest of the world. And why are we here today? We're here to export our idea to you. We are not a tech company. Tech IP is outdated. Our IP is thought leadership. And we want you to get on board, to live it in India. Our idea is rep replicable and scalable, and we want you to reap the benefits of a smart and sustainable community. Because after all, home is where the smart is. <laughs> of you in the room. <laughs>